TW, family conflicts, false accusations, legal issues. My own sister made false accusations against me because I refused to supply alcohol for her party. This happened some years ago. I'm in my 30s now, but back then, I was 22. My sister was 18 and was my mom's golden child. My dad, thankfully, has a good head on his shoulders and has always called my sister out on her SHT. But my mom's interference always meant my sister got off easy anyway. This is what happened back then. My parents decided to take a vacation to ski in Aspen and let my sister watch the house for them. They told her no parties, but that was a rule she straight up ignored. A day after our parents left, my sister started sending out invitations to a party, and she was promising free alcohol. I didn't see that post just yet, but my sister called me and asked me to go get alcohol for her party because I was over 21 and could legally buy it. She also wanted me to pay for it and said she'd invite me to the party and introduce me to an easy girl in order to pay me back. I told her that I wasn't going to break the law to make her happy. She should never have told people her party would have alcohol. She screamed at me over the phone that I was ruining her life and that she couldn't take back the invites now that they were all over her Facebook. I looked at her post and face palmed. I told her that what she did was really stupid and she and her friends were all underage. So it's illegal. She tried to say it'd only be illegal if I narrated to them. I said I wouldn't narc but I wasn't going to buy her booze either. She screamed at me some more, so I hung up the phone. Well, that night, my sister had the party, and someone called the police for underage drinking. After being arrested and confronted by police later on, my sister threw me under the bus and said that I'd supplied the alcohol she was using. It turns out she actually broke into my dad's liquor cabinet and thought it'd be better to frame me for her crime. The police came and arrested me at my apartment the day after the party. They seemed already convinced I was guilty, and they didn't really listen to me when I said I was never there. But I willingly cooperated with them. At the station, I told them the whole story and got them to look at my sister's Facebook post. Thankfully, there were a few people there who listened to me. But I still had to sit the night out in a cell while my parents were called. My mom and dad flew back home overnight and bailed out both my sister and me. But my mom tried to make my dad leave me in jail because my sister had told them her lies as well. But my dad took the time to talk to me and look at my sister's Facebook. So he believed me. This caused a fight between him and my mom. When they got home, my dad discovered my sister had broken into his liquor cabinet and spoke to the police on my behalf. My mom, however, still wanted the blame to fall on me because, as she put it, the charges were ruining her baby's future. But my innocence was further proven by the fact that I and my car were seen on CCTV when I left work. And when I arrived at home soon after, the apartment I was living in then had CCTV cameras to watch the parking lot. My car did not move from there for the rest of the day and night. In my sister's story to the police, I had driven out and gotten the alcohol for her. But I wasn't seen on CCTV in any liquor store in the county, and my bank account showed no transactions buying alcohol. My parents' house also had a camera at the front door, and my car was never seen in the driveway that day. After being confronted with those facts, my sister's story changed to saying I already had the alcohol and gave it to her at my apartment. But my sister's car had never shown up at my apartment either. And there were like three cheap beers in my apartment fridge and no hard alcohol. My sister finally had to give up on her lies, and my parents were severely disappointed in her. But my mom still tried to convince me to take the fall for my sister. She came to my apartment and actually demanded that I tell the police that it was all my fault. I said I wasn't going to ruin my future for my sister. She refused to leave and went from demanding to begging. She even got on her knees and tried to convince me that she and my dad would make everything okay in the long run if I just took the blame now. I said I'd rather live my life poor than have that felony on my record. She threw a huge fit and started throwing things because I refused to do as she wanted. I threatened to call the police, and she left my apartment, cussing me out like a mad woman. I've never heard so many F-bombs out of her before or since. But she kept them up all the way to her car and followed it up by saying she should have aborted me before driving off. I called my dad right away and told him everything that happened. He was insanely pissed and got into a huge fight with my mom as soon as she got home. She didn't even deny anything she said or did because she deemed it would have been for the greater good of their daughter. But my dad told her that she couldn't destroy me to save my sister. Then he threatened to divorce her if she didn't try to make things right. She ended up sobbing and then saying she'd do whatever he wanted. My dad said that it was couples and family counseling, or it was divorce. My mom signed a prenup before she married him, and she really had no choice. In family counseling, I called her out on how she always believed my sister's lies. My sister tried to say they were not lies, but each one I pointed out over the years said otherwise. I'd taken the time to write a list of all the ones I could remember from the past decade that had all been proven to lie. 
and my mom and sister were forced to stay silent as I read them all. They tried to interject repeatedly, but my dad and the counselor silenced them. My sister, now proven beyond a doubt to be a liar and a manipulator, just shut down and refused to say anything more to the counselor. And my mom finally apologized to me. But it was obviously a forced apology because she looked so uncomfortable doing it. I told her that her apology was very fake, and after so many years of favoritism, the damage was already done. My relationship with her never really recovered because she was convinced I was guilty no matter what was said until my sister admitted the truth and then wanted me to pretend to be the guilty one anyway to protect her favorite child. But nothing went her way, so she just went back to crying about it. When my sister went to court, my mom pleaded with the judge to go easy on my sister for the charges of underage drink and giving other underage people alcohol, as well as attempting to frame me for her crime. She also resisted arrest when the police came and shut down the party. She was very drunk when it happened. They kept her in a cell overnight to sober up, and then she told the police I'd been the one to provide the alcohol. My mom's begging, along with the relentless lawyer my parents hired, got the judge to cut a deal, provided my sister plead guilty, which she did not want to do. But her lawyer highly recommended she take the deal to avoid jail time because there was no other way of keeping her from getting a felony on her record. My sister's lawyer used the fact that the alcohol had not been bought that day but rather had already been in the house long before the party happened to help lessen the charges. My sister's Facebook had also been completely deleted by her as soon as she was able to hide the post. The judge just wanted the case over with, so my sister got off with a huge fine that our mom paid most of out of her own pocket and a couple years of probation. She was also made to get therapy by our dad. She's never really shown actual remorse for what she did, though. And she only had animosity for me, no matter how wrong she was. She was eventually diagnosed as a narcissist after dad made her go see a doctor. After her probation and four years of college were over, she decided she was going to leave home for California and never come back once she landed a good job. She currently works in an office in Los Angeles, and we've not spoken in years. Dad got her that job, and she's not shown any real appreciation for it. Even my mom has given up on her ever coming home for the holidays and us being a family again. It tore her up inside for a few years, but now she's just bitter. She doesn't really blame me anymore, but we only seem to show indifference to each other. Just because my sister cut her off wouldn't make me the new de facto favorite. It just means my mom lost her baby and isn't getting her back. She can't leave my dad because she's too reliant on him, despite having her own career. She'd never want to be on her own again, so she's just become a shell of her former self. Things between me and my dad are still great. He's pretty much disowned my sister for what she's done and has stopped caring if she'll ever talk to him again. He and my mom don't even sleep in the same bedroom anymore. She moved into the guest room about five years ago and has stayed there. Their marriage is really the only one on paper these days. Info, it's a felony or misdemeanor to provide alcohol to minors. And my sister provided stolen alcohol to at least a dozen people who were under 21. Then she resisted arrest and tried to frame me by lying to the police. The fact that she got off easy thanks to the shark-toothed lawyer my parents hired for my sister was incredibly lucky. Not that she was ever appreciative. The judge hit her with a fine for each person she gave alcohol to, which added up. And with the cost of the lawyer, well, my parents were out a lot of money. My sister held a party with underage drinking and got arrested. She tried to throw me under the bus by saying I provided the alcohol, and then I had to be forced to admit the truth. So my mom tried to make me take the blame anyway. My parents nearly divorced. My sister got off easy in court and ran off to California after college. Then she ghosted us all, even our mother, who did nothing but stick up for her. Edit, yes, my parents are wealthy, especially my dad, as he's a business owner. He owns several businesses, actually. One big one and a few smaller ones. He even owns one of the local gas stations. And the town we live in is full of bored police that are just itching to get some action. I also heard that a couple of the miners arrested at that party were the kids of police as well, which did not help my odds when the cops came for me. The reason the investigation went as far as it did is because my dad pushed it through. I also went out of my way to provide some of the evidence, like the CCTV from my job, my apartment complex, and my bank statements showing I didn't buy the alcohol. The rest my dad pushed for. He had a lawyer get the CCTV from every liquor store in the county for that day. Though my mom tried to talk him out of doing so, in the end, this took way too much to prove my sister was a liar because she tried to stick to her story. Even after my parents discovered it, she got the alcohol from my dad's liquor cabinet. And yes, my parents lost a ton of money, basically paying off the court to dismiss most of my sister's charges. My sister had to pay like 10%. That's about it. And that's just the little bit my parents made her pay. They still paid for her college after that as well. 
So people calling this out as rich people drama are exactly right, because it is just that. At the time this went on, I was still in college myself. But my dad insisted I have a part-time job to learn the value of work. And he was exactly right about that. My family is wealthy. But my dad tried to keep me from acting spoiled growing up. I even bought my own first car with money I earned working part-time. But I can't say the same for my sister, as my mom treated her like a princess. The rest of the family as a whole also hates my sister after what she did back then. So there wasn't much love lost when she ghosted us, save for my mom. She cried about it often for an entire year. Edit 2. Yes, this happened in the US. And yes, it was stupid the way the police arrested me. My dad had some pretty strong words with them about that. But I guess the cops had nothing better to do. And the arrest was expunged from my record after I was proven innocent. But as someone in the comments pointed out, it's scary how easily your freedom can be taken away. I've instinctively avoided police ever since that happened. For them, arresting the son of a rich guy must have been a big scandal waiting to happen. And no, no one was injured as a result of the Dewey. But I've spoken with my dad, and he said there were a few DUIs because a few of the miners there got in their cars and tried to drive away. Considering I heard a few of the people there were the kids of police officers, that only made things worse for me. The cops that arrested me both looked middle-aged. So if their kids were involved, that may explain why they treated me like I was guilty. Those who say this is fake, I wish it was. Because it's so stupid that it really should be. But my ungrateful sister broke our family. And she nearly destroyed my reputation as well. These days, everyone in town has forgotten her. She lost most, if not all, of her friends after that party because they were all arrested. Update. I expected to be able to log out of this account and just not come back. But it seems my sister saw my original post on YouTube. She's since called home and attempted to raise hellfire. She contacted our mother in a furious rage, saying that I'd humiliated her. And as a complete shock to me, my mom did not care. My sister told her how to find the post, and she read it. And now she was mad at me. But more so because she felt I made her look like a bad mother all over again. But my dad got involved and said it wasn't like I was lying. Because back then, the things she and my sister did were inexcusable. My mom agreed in a very sad way. But she still said she wished I'd never posted the story. I suppose I couldn't fault her for that. I ended up talking to my sister over the phone because our mom gave her my current number. And the first thing she did when I answered was scream in my ear. I stopped the call because of the screaming. And so the call was followed by a flurry of text messages. My sister demanded I take my original post down. I refused. She threatened to get our parents to make me take it down. But our parents by this time already knew about the post, and among them, our dad does not care, and our mom is more mad that I made her look like a bad mother all over again. So she threatened to get a lawyer and sue me for defamation. I told her to go right ahead. My post was made anonymously, and if she sues, then a lot of people are going to find out my post was about her. She asked if that was a threat. I said no, it's just something that'll likely happen if people dig more into both of our pasts if she starts a lawsuit. It might even affect her career. Rather than responding in text, my sister called me again, and I told her I'd hang up and block her if she screamed in my ear one more time. She angrily demanded I just take my original post down again or else. I pointed out that this is the first time we've spoken in six years, and she had no problem throwing me under the bus in the past any time she could. And now she's mad because her own actions are reflecting poorly on her when no one else knows the story was about her but us. And I really didn't care what she thought of me anymore. Dad has pretty much disowned her, and she destroyed all the golden child love our mom had for her. My sister actually denied being a golden child. So I started to explain exactly what one was. She interrupted me, saying that she's on Reddit all the time. She knows what a golden child is. And I could only laugh at the fact that she knows that and still denies having been one. I pointed out all the things from my first post. How she lied so much, how she always had our mother by her side, how she was openly our mom's favorite, and how she expected everything to be handed to her she was a golden child. There's just no denying that. Well, she took this very personally, and said that she wished our mother had aborted me, just like she'd said all those years ago when I refused to take the blame for my sister's crime. I just laughed some more and asked if that was all she had in her little black book of bad insults. She did not find it amusing that I found it so amusing. I fired back about how she is a self-important narcissist and always will be. She milked our parents so much and had no appreciation for it. Right down to that well-paid Los Angeles office job she's working that dad got her. She scoffed at me and said she got that job on her own merit. I laughed again. No, she did not. Suddenly, a well-connected Los Angeles firm scouted her several states away after college to come work for them when she had no prior experience as an intern. It just doesn't happen. 
The old CEO of that company was a friend of our dad's before he passed away. And dad called in a favor. That's how she got that job. My sister, of course, went into more denial about the truth I'd just presented her. But I guess it finally clicked in her mind that I was correct. She's a narcissist. But she's not dumb. So she just started bragging about how well she's been doing at that job. She made it to assistant manager and is set to be next in line for full manager someday. I was unimpressed. And she demanded to know why. So I pointed out that I've moved on to managing one of my dad's smaller businesses entirely. Sure, it was technically a promotion through nepotism. But I worked hard to earn it. And dad's openly stated that when he someday passes away, I'm to inherit everything. Not that I'm clamoring for it, like she undoubtedly would. I actually want our dad to live a long time. She was so angry that she hung up on me and then called our parents again. She asked her dad if she'd really been disinherited. And they confirmed she was. Dad's will is set to leave her only a small settlement, so she can't contest it. And if she were to try and contest it, she'd automatically get nothing. Even our mom's will has basically written my sister out. My sister ended up crying and saying it wasn't fair. But both of our parents pointed out that her framing me all those years ago wasn't fair. Ghosting them after they paid so much money to keep her from getting a felony and putting her through four years of college was unfair. They had nothing left they wanted to give. My sister ended up blocking us all, from phones to social media. We can't see anything now, but we don't really care. My mom has sat me down and given me a long-awaited, more sincere apology for what happened so long ago. Especially on that day, she tried to make me take the blame for my sister. Years without my sister in her life and the recent incident have made her realize more than ever that she was a terrible mother to us both. And she can't undo anything. But she wanted to at least say she was incredibly sorry. And she loved me. She's just been too ashamed to really show it. She's now finally looking into therapy. And she's even making an effort to spend more time with my dad, like in the old days. It's ironic, really. My sister tore our family apart. And then she somehow put it right back together by being the same kind of nasty person she's always been. So, sis, if you see this post, I bet you will. Don't bother trying to contact us again. Because if you do, then any more drama you cause is going to end up right here. So please leave us alone for the foreseeable future. Update. After all this time, I poked my head in to make an update and found my last post had been removed. So I'm reposting it without subreddits. My sister sank to a new low of manipulation with this one. A couple of months ago, she suddenly showed up at our parents' house with a boyfriend in tow and a positive pregnancy test, saying she was two months along. She claimed she wanted to make amends so her child would be able to know their grandparents. I saw this for what it was from the start. My sister went out of her way to get pregnant, so dad would put her back in the will, and mom would make her the golden girl again. But things didn't go down that way at all. It was in February when my sister showed up all of a sudden. She'd taken a leave from work to come see us. She even tried to act all smiles around me, but I could still see the hate in her eyes. She still blamed me. She never stopped blaming me, but she pretended that she'd seen the error of her ways. Mom seemed to buy her act, but dad didn't at all. Though my parents having a grandchild is something they've been longing for, they begrudgingly accepted my sister back for the moment, but not without making sure whether or not this was a con. My dad suggested my sister take another pregnancy test to confirm. We expected her to protest, but she took the one my dad got and willingly used it. And it was positive. So she was indeed pregnant. My parents asked for some time alone with my sister. So I went home and didn't see them again until the next day's evening. I got the details on what happened from my parents then. The evening before, they'd had a long talk with my sister about all the things she'd done. And I told her that they would help support their grandchild and set up a college fund for them. But if my sister wanted a place back in the family, then she's going to have to work hard for it and prove she's changed. Because it was obvious from the timing of the pregnancy that she only got pregnant to try and get back into the family's good graces. She denied this, of course. But her past actions spoke for themselves. Our parents wanted her to seek therapy, both individually and in groups with them over video calls. And they also wanted her to apologize to me for what she did years ago, since she always refused to. That's when she finally broke and said that I didn't deserve an apology. Because I'm the reason she got her life ruined to begin with. Well, my dad didn't let that slide and practically roared at her. And then he told her that she was never grateful for anything they did for her. And that she was only blaming me so she wouldn't have to take responsibility for her own actions. My mom chimed in and said that she had to realize her own past actions were beyond wrong. Like when she tried to force me to take the blame for my sister back then so her baby wouldn't get in trouble. And how she'd said those horrible things to me when I refused. And if she could genuinely admit her wrongs, my sister could too. Well, my sister flipped out and left with her boyfriend. 
The few times I met the guy, I could tell he was only with my sister for the money. Because she treated him like absolute crap. She even elbowed him in the stomach once, right in front of me. Anyway, my sister came back the next day with a long, rehearsed apology for them. Crocodile tears were included. And again, the only reason our parents let her back in was because of her pregnancy. She was set up back in her old room, and she spent the next few days trying to act all smiles. But her act was pretty bad. She was still expected to give me that long overdue apology. And I met up with her and her boyfriend at a local restaurant our parents picked. We figured if she was to give me anything even remotely genuine as an apology, it couldn't be around our parents. She started off the apology by basically murmuring. And when her boyfriend wanted her to speak up, that's when she elbowed him in the stomach. And hard, too. He asked to be excused and left us one on one. As soon as he was gone, my sister started what's more of a non-apology. Basically, she was saying she was sorry for what happened when she tried to frame me. But it still would have never happened if I'd just gone with it that day and gotten the alcohol for her party. And then we could have both had a great time. I countered that she still didn't get it. She framed me, and when cops were called on her, it had nothing to do with me. So if I had helped that day, then I would have been arrested and charged too. I got up and said she still hadn't changed. She only lived in her little, important world and walked out. When our parents learned of this, my sister tried to deny the words she'd spoken to me. But my dad knows the owner of that restaurant. We were seated away from other noisy guests and were put right below a CCTV camera with audio. It caught everything. And my parents received the video within hours from the restaurant owner. They played it in front of my sister and told her this is exactly why she's not getting much in the will. Her child might be, but not her. That's when she threw a tantrum and walked out, screaming at them. And this time, she didn't come back. She got in her car and drove all the way back to Los Angeles without saying a word to any of us. She later called to say her boyfriend had left her, and she didn't know where he was. As I thought, he was clearly in it for the money. And when their con failed, he cut her loose. So now my sister is around four months pregnant with her baby daddy pulling a runner. She's still sending our parents updates on the pregnancy. And my parents are having a very hard time dealing with the fact that their future grandchild is basically being used as an attempted bargaining chip for my sister to worm her way back in. And sis, if you see this post, I did warn you that I'd do this if you tried anything else. You've left our mother heartbroken all over again, our father beyond disappointed, and me as your mental scapegoat because you still can't admit it was 100% your fault you were disowned. You haven't changed a bit, and I doubt you ever will. Update. Yes, I get that this story sounds extremely fake. I'm also aware that selling one's child isn't exactly legal. Well, my parents found a way. And it involved more than one lawyer. And was called something more of a financial settlement. Yes, it involved an outrageous amount of money. And my parents took a bigger financial hit in this than I had previously alluded to. It's actually pushed back my father's retirement by about 10 years. I can't make any guesses as to the numbers. But I know property in California can go for an outrageous amount. There were also some questions about who is raising my nephew and how. Let's just say that's complicated right now. I'm reposting this free of subreddits. And once gone, I will not be coming back. Despite what some people think, I don't get a kick out of doing this. I previously had an axe to grind with my sister and the SHT she put me through but you can only grind an edge so much before it becomes dull. The original post is as follows. Some time ago, my sister gave birth to a baby boy. She made sure we knew the gender well in advance, as well as sending our parents pictures of ultrasonic sounds and anything else that kept our parents' need for a grandchild's motor running. My sister only allowed our parents to come to the hospital to meet their grandchild at birth. They had to take a last-minute flight to Los Angeles just to be there. My sister also forbade me from going. She said I'd ruined her life enough, she wished she was an only child, she wished me unalive, all stuff like that in repetition, and she doesn't want me anywhere near her again. Well, the feeling is mutual. Three months before the birth, my sister showed up again. This time she pleaded with our parents to let her in to talk and not to contact me because she really didn't want me there. She only had one day before she had to head back to Los Angeles, and she had driven through the night. I wasn't there to see it. But from the details I got from my parents, my sister went crying to mom and begged her to take her back into the family. My dad said that mom hardly wanted to look at her. Dad confronted my sister and said that she hadn't bothered to try to contact them in years, and that she was only back and even pregnant because it was all about the money for her. If she'd never seen my Reddit post, she would still be with us. Mom spoke up and told her that she hoped for so long that my sister would come home to visit or even just talk to her. But it was years of no contact. She'd done everything for her, she'd favored her, she defended her lies, and she'd made sure she didn't get a felony in court. And yet my sister showed zero appreciation. 
Dad backed this up too, and he even compared me to her, and how I at least appreciated my parents. Then he blurted out that I'd been made a legal partner in the business he is having me manage, and that I'm on track to eventually take his place one day. After that, my sister, I'm told, went hysterical and was screaming about how it wasn't fair and it should be her instead. Somehow, she was still allowed to spend the night in her old room. And the next morning, she dropped this bomb on my parents. I heard that her emotions were just gone. I guess she didn't feel the need to keep up the act anymore. She said that she'd allow mom and dad to adopt her child in exchange for a house in California and an undisclosed sum of money that I'm not privy to. And you know what? My parents agreed. But my dad had demands of his own. In return for the adoption of my nephew, my sister gave up any and all rights to her son, signed a contract stating that she would never be a part of the family again, and changed her legal name. That last part really surprised me. Dad went so far as to pay for her name to be changed in order to separate her from the family. This meant getting all of her information reissued, such as her diploma, college degree, passport, and anything else that ever had her name on it. All paid for by my parents, and as part of the agreement, my sister could never change her name back, or even to something similar. My parents didn't half-assess anything in this endeavor. My participation in it was minimal at best. My parents went to California to purchase a house my sister approved of, but she would not be given the house until after the baby was born and in their hands. She was very unhappy about this, as she wanted to move into the house after she'd signed the contract. But our parents had none of it. They gave my sister a week to sign, and she signed in front of a lawyer in less than 48 hours. So as of then, I'm now considered an only child. I'm not going to say I'm happy about that. I used to love my sister before she became a narcissist. But what's done is done. And I'm over it. My parents also tracked down the baby's biological father to get him to relinquish his parental rights as well. My sister found out he went back to his hometown in Arizona after he abandoned her. And my parents went to see him before the baby was born. He had no problem signing away paternal rights after a DNA test confirmed he was the father. He must have still been in cahoots with my sister, because he also wanted a house and a payout as compensation to sign away his rights. Though not nearly as much, I'm told. My parents purchased him a cheap house somewhere and paid him off. Well, I say cheap in comparison to the house they bought for my sister in Los Angeles. This was one expensive baby to adopt. But as my dad said, it's worth every cent to make sure my grandson has a future. My dad sold one of his smaller businesses to a competitor in order to get the money together without really affecting his other finances. Said competitor had been making him offers for years, and my dad wasn't that involved with the business anymore. So he finally took the offer, but only if they retained all of the employees already there, which they did. And now it's their name on the sign. But my parents didn't care because they'd fully adopted my nephew. When the child was born, my sister didn't even want to hold him. And I heard someone even once refer to the baby as that thing which was beyond cruel. She even admitted she was planning to sell the baby in a closed adoption to someone else, but our parents had not agreed to do it themselves. She got her house and her money, and then I promptly cut contact all over again. So she's gone from our lives for good and is no longer related to us. My mom was doing the bulk of the parenting of my nephew until they could find a live-in nanny to help pick up the slack since they're getting old. They needed help with a newborn, especially when they become toddlers. My mom is very happy but my dad has made it clear to her that they will not make the same mistakes they did with my sister. No favoritism, no enabling bad behavior, no lying. And that the child will never know his real mother, as she's unalive to us. And if my sister ever tries to seek him out, she'd be in serious breach of contract and have to return the house or its monetary value. So I doubt she'd bother to ever try. Since the time she first showed up pregnant, my sister and I have only spoken once more over the phone. And it was after my nephew was born. For the record, she called me to gloat and tell me off one last time. I told her she was a delusional narcissist who only wanted to blame me because it's easier for her than accepting reality. But she just reacted smugly, saying that it didn't matter what I said. She's going to believe what she wants to believe, and she's already won anyway since she got what she wanted. She's still got a good career in Los Angeles, lots of money, and now a house. And all it cost her was a baby she didn't even really want. She can live however she wants now, and we can't do a damn thing about it because we are no longer family. I hung up and blocked her number. I was seething with anger, but there was no point in arguing further. In her own way, yeah, she'd won. But at what cost? She no longer has family, and she has no one to rely on ever again if things go south for her. My nephew isn't going to be raised as another son, due to a 30-plus year age difference between me and him. So my parents want to make it clear that he is a grandson as he grows up and that we are his true family. Our goal is to make sure he never has any desire to seek out his biological mother. She never wanted him anyway. 
And it's better he understands that from a young age rather than pine for the mother he never had. So I guess this is the end. It was a long time coming. But I'm honestly happy that my sister no longer has any connection to us. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoy listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.